Hey, it's Ian Gomez from Clifford. This is ACDC Econ. We're talking about the money multiplier. It's time to practice. What I have for you is different scenarios, and I have different reserve requirements. Your job is to tell me what's the multiplier, so get used to calculating that. And then tell me what's the change in money supply going to look like. So it's going to increase or decrease, and how much is it actually going to increase or decrease according to these numbers. By the way, the Fed buys a whole lot more than $80 worth of bonds, but we're trying to simplify it to make sure you understand the concept. All right? Good luck. All right, let's go over the answers. If the Fed buys $80 worth of bonds and the reserve requirement is 10%, first let's calculate the multiplier. The multiplier is 1 over 1 tenth, so the multiplier is 10. Any amount of money that gets put in the economy or taken out of the economy gets multiplied by 10. In this case, this is buying bonds. We know the rule, buy is bigger. Money supply would be bigger, so the change in the money supply would increase. It would be 80 times 10, and so this would be $800 increase in money supply because that $80 gets multiplied. Done. How about if the Fed sells $100 worth of bonds? Well, so the reserve requirement is 1 over 0.2 or 1 over 1 fifth, so the multiplier is 5. Right? If the multiplier is 5, that $100 billion taking out of the economy, remember taken out of the economy, Fed sells them, would decrease, right? Sell makes smaller, would decrease it by 500 decrease the money supply. So what if the Fed buys $30 worth of bonds? Well, the reserve requirement is 50%, so it's one over one half. So the multiplier is two, and so since it's buying, this would increase the money supply. 30 times two, grand total is 60. The increased money supply would be $60. All right, next one, the Fed sells $20 worth of bonds, but 100% reserve requirement, right? So it's one over, one, so the multiplier is one. So if the Fed sells $20 worth of bonds, that's going to decrease the money supply, but only by $20. Here's what I want to show you. I use these numbers on purpose. All right, when the reserve requirements increase, what happens to the multiplier? Well, it decreases, right? If banks have to hold more and more and more, then the amount of money that gets multiplied or created by banks is going to be less and less and less. Now, how about this last one? If you deposit $50 in your bank, right? Well, it's 20 as a reserve requirement, so it's 1 over 1 fifth, and the multiplier is 5. And you're tempted to say 250. This would increase at 250. And you'd be wrong. It's not 250. It is only 200. What? How'd you know that? Well, the reason why is this is saying what's going to happen to the change in the money supply, that change in the supply of money. Well, the $50 was already in the money supply. Now, how did I get it? Well, I just multiplied 50 times 5 and subtracted out the original amount. Right? That gives you $200. Now, hopefully this makes sense, okay? Till next time.